Did you know that Spain is the second largest country in the EU and has the fifth largest population in Europe? Throughout the centuries, Spain has been subject to the lordship of other countries. As the playground of both the respectful and the ruthless, Spain coasts have been occupied by the trading empire of Carthage, the ancient Greeks and Romans, the Visigoths, the French, and the Muslims. All that time, others told Spain how to run their country, how to fight, whom to fight, and where to fight. They had one of the largest empires in the world, something history barely mentions, as they had land in both North and South America, the Caribbean, and some islands in the Mediterranean. The rich tapestry of rulers and cultures had endowed a unique flavor to Spain. From Gaudi, Dali, and Velázquez to Miro and Picasso, the creativity of Spain is evident to all and sundry. Here are seven significant Spanish contributions to world history. Corrective Lenses The Umayyad Caliphate engaged in conquests like the caliphates before it, incorporating North Africa, among other areas. In 711, Musa bin Nasair, the ruler of Muslim North Africa, dispatched Tariq ibn Ziyad to raid Iberia. Most of the Iberian Peninsula was under the caliphate's control by the end of his campaign. Tariq took mostly Berbers along with him, although there were some Arab warriors too. The Berbers were from North Africa, namely Morocco, Tunisia, and Algeria, and there were Islamic converts. The non-Muslim community called them the Moors, named after the country of Mauritania in northwest Africa, from where they came. The Moors came to represent Muslim inhabitants in the Iberian Peninsula and elsewhere in Europe. In the 9th century, a Berber Andalusian polymath, physician, engineer, chemist, musician, astronomer, and poet, Abbas ibn Finas, became the first to use glasses as a corrective measure for weak eyesight. Corrective lenses, also known as reading stones, were only one of his many inventions. It is important to note that glasses had been used for reading for a long time before Abbas stumbled upon the idea of visual aid. For instance, the Stoic Roman philosopher Seneca used a glass globe of water to read all the books in Rome. By 1000, the visual aid, made from quartz or barrel, was becoming increasingly popular. However, these were not wearable glasses. Spectacles were invented a few centuries later, in 1284, using the same principles as Abbas's creation. Eyeglasses were given artistic representation in a painting by Tommaso de Medina, implying that they were a relatively common item in those times. Hot Chocolate when Europeans discovered the New World, Spain sent out its boldest explorers, the conquistadors. The wonders of the Maya, Inca, and Aztec empires opened up a treasure beyond anyone's anticipation. Spain dominated Mexico and other regions in Central and South America. The settlers created businesses to support the cities and towns. The indigenous farmers were given land to farm and paid tribute in the form of goods or labor for the Spanish population. The two greatest exports from the Americas were silver and sugar. Those were labor-intensive endeavors, so the Spanish sent enslaved Africans to do the heavy labor. Over the years, vanilla and cacao beans became popular in Europe. The Mesoamericans had been harvesting cacao beans for centuries. Contrary to what some might think, cacao is not naturally sweet. The Spanish found the Mesoamerican beverages too bitter, so they began sweetening them to use as chocolate. The Catholic Church benefited from cacao production, as it was the most valuable contributor to the tithe, the tax charged on certain goods. In Europe, the Church exerted considerable influence, so it did not take long for the new drink to become famous. By adding sugar and serving the drink warm, the Spanish gave the world a popular hot drink in the form of hot chocolate. Stapler The stapler is a ubiquitous device. You can find one in every office. But did you know it was made in the Basque Country in northern Spain? The modern stapler came into being in 18th century France. Paper had arrived in Europe a few centuries prior, and the excessive amount of papers needed to be managed. People had utilized stitching, pins, and other methods to organize papers for a long time. But these techniques required a lot of unnecessary, tedious labor. Just like the struggle of writing books by hand gave way to the printing press, Something had to be done to relieve people of the languish of sewing every document together. In the 1700s, the first stapler was made for King Louis XV of France, inscribed with the insignia of the royal court. This stapler, although French, was made in the Basque country. 
Over the years, the stapler evolved and acquired its modern form in the 1800s. The practice of efficiently binding books garnered much curiosity. In 1866, George W. McGill was awarded the patent for a paper fastener, the precursor to the modern stapler. In the late 1800s, various devices became popular for punching and folding paper sheets together. An Englishman named John Munford, whose contributions were never officially recognized, designed the modern stapler in use today. Classical Guitar For people who may not know, the acoustic guitar is different from a classical guitar. An inscription in Mesopotamia dating to the 3rd millennium BCE depicts the earliest precursor to the modern classical guitar. If we think about the guitar in the broadest sense, its history dates back to ancient times. The word originates from kitara, a seven-string lyre in Anatolia. Except for the name, the ancient instrument of the Greek god Apollo has no relation to the modern instrument. It is unclear how the device of the ancients evolved, from lute and oud to its current form. The Islamic conquest of Spain in the 8th century brought Mesopotamian musicians to the land, and the oud arrived with them. The Spanish locals were used to pandura, a stringed instrument introduced by the Romans. Still, the Islamic norms of five-string instruments, taught by a Muslim polymath from Baghdad, Ziryab, prevailed in Iberia. Here, the oud would evolve in multiple ways. Thanks to the Byzantine empires, the growing power of Asia Minor and the Western Mediterranean, and the declining authority of Mesopotamians and Muslims in Europe, the geopolitical terrain became very diverse. The instrument became popular in North Africa and Southern Europe, even making its way to Central Europe. In Spain, the Moors popularized Guitarra Morisca, or the Moorish guitar, where a Latinized version, known as Guitarra Latina, also emerged. In the Kingdom of Aragon, these forms gave birth to the vihuela in the 15th century. When the Spaniards headed to the New World, this invention traveled to Cuba and Mexico, where it became fashionable. The vihuela was a direct precursor to the Baroque guitar, invented in Spain in the mid-15th century. Like Zir Yab's design, it had five strings, which the Europeans considered a novel phenomenon. By the 18th century, another string was added to the instrument. In the 19th century, the Spanish musician Antonio Torres Jurado expanded the size of the guitar, while Francisco Torrega, a Spanish composer, popularized the modern playing style. The former is often credited for the invention of the contemporary classical guitar. Other prominent 19th century Spanish figures involved in creating the modern classical guitar included Ignacio Fleda, Hermann Hauser Sr., and Robert Boucher. Foosball the claims of inventing foosball are aplenty, making the history of this game somewhat murky. Patents of similar games can be traced back to the late 1800s and early 1900s. However, the modern version of the game was indisputably invented in Spain. Following some bombing raids during the Spanish Civil War, Alexander Finester, a Spanish poet, playwright, and artist, was lying in a hospital. He witnessed several children with leg injuries in the hospital, unable to play football. He began designing a game for the children to play and ended up with, the mystery of how it became foosball has many answers. Along with his friend Francisco Javier Altuna, he sent a prototype to be patented in 1937. Despite being a fascinating invention, the Spanish industries were busy manufacturing weapons and had little time for indulging the plans for a football table. He later went into exile and continued developing his tables in Guatemala. According to some claims, he even played foosball with Che Guevara, the Cuban revolutionary. He was arrested and the Spanish planned to bring him back to Spain. Finester was shrewd and, like his game, had a penchant for illusion. By making a bomb in the plane toilet using a soap bar, he forced the plane to land in Panama. He escaped from the landed plane and spent the next few years in different countries, including Ecuador and Mexico, before returning to his homeland in 1976. The Mop an important if unglamorous invention, the modern mop. During his stay at the Chanute Air Force Base in the U.S., a Spanish engineer, entrepreneur, and Air Force officer, Manuel Jalon Corominas, noticed people using flat mops in buckets with rollers. Upon his return, he started manufacturing floor cleaners in Spain, where his style of purpose-built mops with buckets to wring the water out caught on. This improvement on the original mop may seem simple, yet it was a tremendous practical invention. Tiki-taka Johann Cruyff, 
widely regarded as one of the greatest soccer players to ever grace the field, once said, controlling the ball is the basis of football. His former teammate and Barcelona coach, Pep Guardiola, would evolve Cruyff's philosophy of total football into its much-revered form of tiki-taka, a special playing technique. The Dutch idea of a prized possession and use of space had served them well, but it was not an intriguing prospect in modern soccer. When Guardiola arrived at Barcelona, the influence of Dutch managers at the club was evident. He decided to put their philosophy to the test. This experiment developed into a possessive style of short passes and movement in spaces. With legends like Iniesta and Xavi, Pep incorporated positional play and continuous rotation of the ball. With short, quick, and intelligent players who could not compete physically on the field, his team was primed to play in this style. Having arguably the greatest player to ever touch the ball, Lionel Andres Messi made the job much easier. During his four-season Barcelona tenure, the team won three La Liga titles and two Champions League titles. The style even carried over to the Spanish national team as La Roja captured the 2010 World Cup. In an interview, the French great Eric Catona equipped, In 2010, Barcelona won the World Cup, not Spain. He is not entirely wrong as the majority of the Spanish national team was made up of Barcelona players, whose light touches, quick short passes, excellent use of open spaces, and value possession earned them the prestigious trophy. Even the late winner in the final was scored by Barcelona man Andres Iniesta. Tiki-Taka exalted Pep Guardiola to the rank of celebrated managers, turned players into legends, and made the argument for the 2008-2012 Barcelona team to be the greatest team ever to play the game. Xavi and Iniesta were regarded among the greatest midfield duos in history. Messi's ridiculous tally of 91 goals in 2012 and his four Ballon d'Or awards during the historic stretch etched him into soccer history. The Argentinian went on to win the award multiple times again, but his journey started here. Today, Tiki Taka is a one-of-a-kind phenomenon in soccer, with clubs and countries from all over the globe utilizing the setup to great results. From La Masia and Spain to the rest of the world, it has fundamentally changed the game of soccer, for better or worse. How would you like to get a deeper understanding of history, impress your friends, and predict the future more accurately based on past events? If this sounds like something you might be into, then check out the brand new Captivating History Book Club by clicking the first link in the description. To learn more about Spain, check out our book, History of Spain, A Captivating Guide to Spanish History starting from Roman Hispania through the Visigoths, the Spanish Empire, the Bourbons, and the War of Spanish Independence to the present. It's available as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.